I often hear, I want to get a dress form. And the question I ask back is, why do you want one? The answers range from, I don't know, to I want a friend in my sewing room with me. Dress forms can be very beneficial if we take full advantage of both the visual and the fit that a dress form can offer. Today we'll look at how and why we benefit from a dress form and how we get that dress form to match us. Join us today on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is made possible by Kai Scissors. Plano Sewing Center. Elliot Berman Textiles. Benno's Buttons. Imitation of Life. In Clutch Nails. I bought a dress form. Now, I'm not sure what to do with it, but I bought a form because I wanted one in my room to keep me company, and I'm gonna show you a few ideas of what I suggest you do with it. And the first and foremost, it took me many years to figure out, and the goal today is to help you save a whole bunch of time. So, I used to do fashion shows, and I remember doing the fashion shows, and I would be commentating the fashion shows, and I'd see the models come out, and I'd like, oh my gosh, who put that together? Like, it doesn't even look like it matches. It was so, I just made bad decisions about mixing pattern and fabric. So what I'm saying to you is, if you take those choices you have, and if you put them on a form, just drape the fabrics together as to what you think will work together and back off, you'll have a much better visualization as to whether you like this fabric with the green or this fabric with the red or this fabric with not at all, with either one. And that's really the goal of the dress form. It helps you visualize yourself at a distance. And I've seen many women who did not visualize themselves at a distance because we pick out fabrics and we're like this close to them and we're touching them and we're feeling them and we're loving them, but then we don't get that distance. So use the dress form, get the distance in so you can see what does it blend with better and what does that visualization do for you from a distance. You can tell where your eyes will go first, you can tell what it will look like, and it will give you a pretty good example. For that reason, I would buy a dress form just for that, because I think it's that important. It is really hard as a sewer when you're sewing by yourself to get opinions on all this stuff, because nobody is there <laughs> to ask. The next reason we're gonna have a dress form is because we're gonna use it for fit. Fit, that nasty three-letter word that all of you just love is fit. And so I've actually asked Cindy to help me on this. So I'm gonna bring Cindy in and we're gonna just play a little bit. Have Can fun. we do that? Yes. We're gonna have fun with fit. Now we've done our homework. A little bit. A little bit, a few hours. So it'll take you a few hours to do this. It will. Like 10. No, maybe three. 10, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Simply because there is some steps in getting all this done. It is. So where did you start? With the sheath dress pattern and I found the closest to my measurements. Okay. Because I didn't want any ease, because I want it to be me. Okay, so let's hear that. We want a knit sheath. The reason we're using a knit, because we want it closer to the body, we're not putting a sleeve in it, and we're not using a fabric that needs to be knit. So we want a knit, just so that the form of the body is better. Right. And? A knit pattern, but woven fabric. Correct. So, and we want four pieces, because fitting of that sheath dress is much easier with those four pieces yes. than to deal with a waistline. You can always draw on a waistline. It doesn't matter where the waistline is. So this will make it the easiest possible. Right. You don't need a sleeve. Don't need a sleeve. Your sleeve you can do off of you. Really, this is for stuff that's a little more difficult to fit on you. And I picked Cindy because 
because I like her, number one. But also because she has a great shape. She looks great, but she, we all have some little things about us, like her shoulder blade back here is a little more prominent that you can see than it is on this side. So if she wears anything that is not altered correctly, it has a tendency to pull to the side because this is the larger side. That it's not fitted correctly. And so she notices it as she wears it. And also you see that there's wrinkles across the back. And she just wants to do away with that, especially because I know her and I know that her sewing has just gotten to be beautiful. It's just beautiful. She's a beautiful seamstress. And now she really wants the whole package. Because it's hard to fit the back. It's like impossible. It it, no, it's not impossible. We shouldn't say that. But it, it's more time consuming. It is to look in the mirror and pull it up and pinch and take it off. So the goal in a dress form is to duplicate yourself, put it on that form, and then that way she can drape herself but on the form, and that's the goal. Okay, so we've cut it out, we've used red. Cindy picked the color, she likes it. She looks good in red. Okay, so now we're ready for the fun part. You fun. ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fun part, this is the part you did all the work for. Right. Okay, so because she's got differences in the back, she wants to be aware of which side is which side. And when you put those seam allowances to the outside, they're much easier to transfer the changes than if they're to the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, what other considerations did we do in the beginning? Can you think of anything else? We got the princess seam pattern. You chose it according to your size, your body size, no ease. No ease. Which is why I suggested go with like a knit pattern as opposed to a woven. However, you used woven fabric instead of knit fabric. That's right, because we're not wearing it. We're just gonna cover a dress form. That's a very good. And you don't need the stretch. You don't need the stretch, perfect. And I only need those four pieces and we're good to go. Okay, everybody's on the same the page. Front helps you fit yourself better. It does, and it also, if you, if you were to pin up the front, you can uh, make a difference when you go to change it. So it's really better to put a zipper so that zipper is consistent. Mm -hmm. It won't give you a variable when you're actually going to fit. Right. Okay, so the, when we start the drape process, and many of you have used, watched over the seasons, the episodes, whatever, as I've done this draping, we're just gonna do it again. And what we know is we go L, C, and D, and that's what we're gonna do. With a princess seam, as long as that uh, your bust is in the area of the princess seam, it's hard, to, it's hard to mess up a princess seam. There's no one exact point that that princess seam needs to align to the body. So do not worry about that area. In a princess seam, I am gonna turn her to the back. You will notice that there's buckling in through here because the waist of the garment is longer than what she is. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that away. Now keep in mind that this is a, this is length that we're talking about, but actually if you notice when I go to fix the length, um, it, it's actually not length because it, it tapers to nothing. Over here, if you notice, I don't have the same amount here as I have here, and what we know about a uneven length is that becomes depth. So if you notice, that wrinkle just tapers to nothing right here. We can't, you know, I can't even hardly get a hold of it anymore. So we call that a sway back. It, it will manifest itself. It will look in the back. You won't typically see it in the front. It will manifest itself in the back as wrinkles. Um, but once I start to try to pin it out, because it's not a length issue, it will taper to nothing. And I'll recognize at that point its depth. Okay, very simple to do, very common adjustment, we recognize, and you can see how much less wrinkled that is. Now there are other wrinkles, and that's the snare that you don't wanna get snagged into. You don't want to say, let me fix the wrinkles, because oft times it's confusing to you whether it's length, circumference, or depth that's causing those wrinkles. So if you just go in order, so in other words, the first one was the bust, shoulder blade, there's no issues there. The waist, we can see there's a wrinkling. And if you're not sure, try to adjust it. And you can see where it got better. There must have, it must have been right. Then the next part is, is if you'll just kind of, I say this a lot and you guys think I'm crazy. If you just listen to the cloth, the cloth will tell you what it wants. And just so, don't be so strong with the cloth that you're overpowering it. Allow the cloth to just drape. And then if she turns around, on a sheath dress to her body, there's no hip alignment. 
it doesn't matter if it's right, wrong, or indifferent. Remember, I can come in and draw a waist later on. I don't need an exact waist, bust, or hip point at this while we're draping. Okay, then we're gonna talk about circumference. That's L, L is bust, waist, and hip. Circumference is exactly that. It's circumference around. And I notice that Cindy's got a little extra here that you don't probably no, want I, on I there. No, I don't need that, no. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you've worked probably hard to get that off, so yes. we're gonna go ahead and keep it off. And so, and I would strongly recommend that you put a pin in each side to make sure that the amount ta being taken away is the same on both sides. But I wouldn't pin both sides because I've done this for a lot of years and I don't pin exactly right. And then once you take it off, you look at it and say, okay, which side's right? Pin one side, reduce it down to three H and seam allowance, and then cut that same amount off the other side and sew a seam allowance. And that way it's much easier to get that to be the same on both sides. You're actually not gonna use both sides anyway, but a lot of times you just wanna do that drape just to make sure it's feeling or looking like it should. Right. And that's the only circumference issue. You actually chose the circumference by the bust. I did. Yeah, so you're typically, that's the way to do it. You're not gonna see a lot of changes there. It's then just a matter of if you're smaller in the hips or bigger in the hips and you're smaller. Okay, so now we're at depth. And depth, we're gonna start at the top. We're gonna work our way down and we start with the shoulder angle. And again, because I already know of this issue where she's different on both sides, I'm gonna pay special attention to it and you guys are gonna watch the result. So always, when you're making depth changes, always use the seams that are there if you can. So in this case, notice I use the shoulder seam. In this case, notice I use the shoulder seam. I'm always gonna use the seams first that are already there. And these shoulder seams are just waiting their turn. They just want me to do something to them. Then I'm gonna come in and just Take out this extra. If you notice, there's a little bit of extra here. And taper it to nothing. Taper it right back into the seam so that you know where to start stitching and where to stop stitching. Okay, now all these little angles are what's called depth. That pin is not gonna wanna participate today. So all these little angles. So I'm gonna turn her sideways just for a little bit. And you notice there's a little bit of wrinkling in through here. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take a dart. That dart is not gonna be in the final product because it's gonna end, it's gonna start at one seam and it's gonna end at the princess seam. And you can see right there, you're just looking for any little angle that you can do to make this garment fit you better. Isn't that getting pretty? Underneath here, because Cindy and I kind of talked, her dress form, and, and these are all choices that you guys can make. There's definitely not one right answer. But she wanted her dress form to be a little closer to her. I did. So I'm actually curving in right under it. If you're wearing t-shirts and things of that nature, you'll want to do that so that you get a really good sense for that form and how it fits. Let's turn to the back. And I'm going to make sure that these two sides are even. I'm going to just put you like that. And so you can see that you can take this up. Because I did a dart over there that started at the side seam, I've got to continue that dart and I've got to find a place because that dart, what that dart did is it shortened the side seam. So I've got to find a place where it can continue. It's right here. And it's going to continue right here. And then the fabric will tell me where to end it. At the side seam though, in both places, it needs to be the same. So we're gonna go there. And you notice that when I come to the seam, there's that bubble there. I don't want that bubble there. So that's where I'm telling you the fabric is telling me to keep going. Now you notice, see how it stops there? And so that's how I know it's ready to quit. It'll taper, 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 taper to nothing because keep in mind, her back matches its center. It's just a matter of knowing where the differences are. And can you see how nicely that lays now? It's a little, little bit of extra here. All you gotta do is kind of feel around, see where it is. Remember that I can take out anything because the muslin with, with the princess seam will lay flat. I'm gonna take it out here. I'm gonna go through this seam. And again, notice when I get to this seam, 
how there's like a bubble over there. So continue it on this side until there's no bubble. And you can see it just kind of, again, tapers to nothing at center back. Isn't this cool? This is so cool. A lot of women think that draping is just taking yards of cloth and just kind of, you know, sticking it everywhere, but it's really not. Okay, there we've got it. We've got her larger side here, you can see. And so now, and the goal in doing all of this, oh, that looks so good. The goal in doing all of this is because if our clothes fit us, then we don't look, we look completely normal. You won't see any differences like that at all. There's many times that we've talked about shoulder pads and we could put a shoulder pad in, but we don't want to. We'd much rather have the garment fit without those shoulder pads, I think so. Right. Yeah, I mean, and then I can decide, do I want shoulder pads in my garment or do I want my garment without shoulder pads? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what we've done is we're gonna take, you don't necessarily have to take this apart. Again, this is your option. But I am gonna lay together, I'm gonna put her pattern pieces, because for, this was not that far off, I'm gonna put her pattern pieces together and I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna start cutting the foam. So this is where the fun really starts. So tell me about why you bought this dress form. It matched my circumference the closest. Okay. Of where I know I could go, I wouldn't go any less than that. Okay, so here's the rule. We always want the dress form to be smaller than you. Right. Always. You want it to be smaller than you'll ever lose weight for. So somewhere in your psyche, you'll never be smaller than this bus size. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, and what we want to do is we're going to take the difference of this body, and this, this garment is measuring what, Cindy? What's this measure? 38. Perfect. And you measure? 40. Okay, so we know we've got to pad this two inches, which is just that thing all the way around. Right. Okay, and the waist? Was 29. Okay, and you don't have to give up your waist measurement if you don't want. But we'll need to pad it up too. Okay, and we know we need to add two inches here, six inches here, and two inches in the, in the hip. Okay, so because we knew those answers, I went ahead and I got a batting that was, half an, that was a half an inch. So if we took a half inch batting and wrapped it all the way around, that would add the amount that I needed because it adds half, 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 half. It adds half right. all the way around. So, Cindy, just so that I'm making sure I'm doing this right, I'm gonna do that because the batting doesn't have to be flat all the way around. Right. Now, Cindy, you did it a little different way. I did, I wanted my batting a little more form-fitted. <laughs> Me all the because way. Because it's her and you have to look at your body and That's say, right. hey, this is me, right? And I didn't need any extra bumps or wrinkles. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead. You're just going to cut it out and it doesn't exactly matter. I just wanted you to see how that's done because we've already done it and this is so cool. And Cindy's just going to help me pin it. Now, what we did is we went through and we did all these changes. We, listen to me. <laughs> Cindy did all these changes. She stitched them all and she made another one, but it's just simply because um, we didn't want her to undress on the stage. So she made another one, and she's got the zipper down the front. All we have to do at this point is layer these pieces onto her. And so I think it helps to have a buddy here too. I'm gonna put a little pin here just to hold it in place. Now Cindy stitched these little darts and stuff, but again, you don't really have to. This is the front for sure? Yes. Okay. And then this is the back. And we're gonna put this here, we can turn this around. We're gonna turn this around and we're gonna put it on the back. And you want to, when you're butting up these pieces, butt them right up next to each other. Don't overlap them because if you overlap them, you're gonna to create too much, you change the shoulder angle. You do. And then when you come to the side, you know, if you can do without pinning, you want to just for a minute, which is why I think a buddy is kind of good. And here's her little shoulder blade. Her little shoulder blade. Okay, then Cindy's gonna hold this in place and this is why it's nice to have two of you because if you don't, <laughs> it just, just takes a little more time. We're gonna put this over her head and we're gonna hold these in place and we're just gonna pull this down. Slowly, don't let them fall. I can see this one's trying to slip away. All right, and we're just gonna pull. And this is almost Cindy. So cute, it's so fun. And you know some things that we should think about, you guys, and I, I didn't mention these, but I did mine 
one of the times I did a dress form, I did it in a blue, and I'm telling you, I didn't like the blue, and I got so tired of looking at the blue. The blue. Yeah, and it kind of like, it kind of clashed with other things that I was doing. Hey, you know what we forgot? We forgot your waist. Oh, my waist. Grab your waist. Okay, so because the waist was larger, we went ahead and just, we did a little insert, and we put this waist all the way around. We just wrapped it like a little belt. We kind of measured her to figure out how wide it was and where it would go. And look at that, you guys. So that makes it two inches, six inches, and two inches. And there's Cindy. So what I was saying about doing the colors and checking to make sure you like the color, because I swear every time I made something, I could not stand that blue. I finally just changed it out because I just didn't like it. But you can put that down um, and you can see where that is Miss Cindy. That's me. Does it look like you? <laughs> yes. Okay, this is, this is the fun part. Because then what you want to do is you want to take some clothes and let's dress her. Let's dress her. Because what you want to do is see, is it really me? I can always change a few pieces, but you know how this fits on you. And then you can put this on the dress form to say, hey, this is how it fits on the dress form. I think the really important, but that's cute. Does it look this cute on you? It does. Does it? <laughs> and look how nicely it fits the back where she's altered and, oh, that looks so good. It looks really good. Thank you. I think it really helps to see how we look, how we are, how we come off. And then again, when- And, you, and accept your body the way it is. Yeah, that's it's, true. It still looks good in clothes. That could be bad. Because <laughs> you really have to get to see you as everybody else sees you. I don't know if that's a good thing. But here's another thing that we wanted to see. Because a little bit ago, she'd made a trench. And this trench is really nice. And she really wanted, keep in mind that for all of us, when we have um, any issue, and we all have them, and some of us, you know, you all know, and some of us you don't, we just become more aware of that yes. part that's wrong, whatever it is. And we think that the whole world sees that the first thing they look at us, which is not true, but I think that's how you start to feel about something like this. Mm -hmm. And something like this, because I corrected it through the shoulder and I corrected it through the darting, um, I can correct the armhole now. Re you know, we can go back and use an armhole template and we can correct all of that. But when you have something that fits so beautifully, it just feels amazing. And if you look, we'll let you tie her little tie. And Cindy can see herself coming now. But I want you to see the changes that she made. And you can, I mean, it, now that we point it out, you can kind of clearly see it, that this shoulder is higher. But you don't see it, especially, and I think my favorite person to watch dressing is Queen Elizabeth. Because mm. you know that she's 96, you know that she's aged, and yet those more hems grounded. are mm -hmm. always straight across the bottom. Right. And that's clearly coming because the body of this alteration has been done and the dress is imperfect to match your imperfect body and it goes all the way and it's just gorgeous. It's just really fun. So this is actually Cindy's dress form and we padded it and she's ready to go and she's ready to take it home. It'll be much easier for her, it except will. you won't sign up for any more of my classes. No, I'll still come <laughs> visit. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. You know, doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of time. It really is selecting your pattern. And I would strongly aware that you get that sheath. It's four pieces. The sheath will make it easier to drape, easier to change. I can see the pieces. I can see what works together. And I'm truly, even if you decide you don't want to do the drape and you don't want to do the fitted portion of it, I think for the visual, it's a really good lesson. And I think it took me way too long to learn that lesson of distance versus close up because we're just always picking up fabric so close up. We want to get the foam. And I used a half inch because I knew we were doing two inches of difference. If it's less, you can get a thinner foam. So just do it based accordingly to what your needs are and how you think it'll work. But it's just a fun project. It's even more fun when you have a buddy. Cindy and I have had a blast going through this process. And, you know, like I said, when she stitched her parts, it's just because she wanted to stitch those parts. I have not heard many of you say that pattern changes are easy and fun. Well, my goal is to change that. So next time on Fit to Stitch, you'll learn basic pattern rules so that changing patterns really can be easy and fun.
Fit to Stitch is made possible by Kai Scissors. Plano Sewing Center. Elliot Berman Textiles. Benno's Buttons. Imitation of Life. In Clutch Nails. To order a four DVD set of Fit to Stitch Series 11, please visit our website at fittostitch.com.